an airport appearance putting Catherine King in the spotlight. Well, thanks for coming out, everybody. I normally don't have quite a big, as big a press pack. The Transport Minister fronting the media after it came to light that she wrote to the five Australian women subjected to invasive strip searches in Doha in 2020. On the same day, she rejected the airline's bid for extra flights. This is the only airline that has something like that. Uh, that has happened. Then contradicting herself over her decision. I can't say that you know I wasn't aware of it, uh, but certainly it wasn't the only factor. It was one, it was a factor. Well, it wasn't a factor in the decision, but it certainly provides context. But Qatar is still welcome in the capital. Qatar could increase its flights into Australia today. It should be flying here into Canberra Airport. In the chamber, the opposition pushed Catherine King on when the Prime Minister knew about her decision. Can the Minister confirm the exact date the Prime Minister or his office were informed of her decision on the application for additional Qatar airway flights to and from Australia? I responded to the media request on the 18th of July, uh, by which point the Prime Minister was aware of the decision I had made. The PM was showing no interest in talking about the matter while overseas. No, la last, last one. On but he's backing in his minister. That, that is not a... Do you a... still have confidence in the president? Come on. Of course I do. The government began its week expecting to spend each day defending its case for an Indigenous voice to parliament. It's ended with a barrage of questions over the Qatar decision, and more are likely. The Prime Minister will be back next week for what will be the final sitting before the October 14 referendum. If the government can survive that, it might just get the clear air it wants to campaign for The Voice. Dana Morse, ABC News, Canberra.